What's up everyone? This is Michaela Mateus, Tahir Khan and Blood and Water. Keep watching a Wackers review. Hey guys, what's up? It's Leroy Siafa. I play the role of Sam in Blood and Water season two. Thank you for watching and please keep watching a Wackers review. When Blood and Water came out, I knew it was going to be a smash hit. I really liked how a lot of people could relate with the characters from their flaws to what makes them unique. But this relatability ended when we saw the tablets in their classrooms. <laughs> in my school, I had only chalk and a child that kept on eating the chalk. But we all loved it. It did well for my channel. It brought new eyes to this page. So I was excited when they released their second season, mostly because of the views. So if you haven't seen my first review please kindly <laughs> please and kindly go and watch that now i will be reviewing all the episodes one by one this is going to be a very long video so enjoy <laughs> Episode 1 was titled The New Kid Syndrome. We got introduced to this new kid that is a mama's boy. What shocked me was that his mom used the memes that are not outdated. I was expecting a minion meme straight from the depth of Facebook hell. <laughs> Risi is one person I advocated for in my last review. I wanted to see more about her backstory because I felt she was an untouched gem in the show. And I was right. <laughs> She's selling rocks. You get like selling rocks, selling drugs, you get. The joke was funny when I wrote it down. But this is her backstory. Her mom is not in the best shape mentally and she wants to raise money to send her to a home for people like her. But the only problem is that place is very expensive. So she decides to sell drugs to kids. Wonderful. Fikile for some reason is having severe nightmares where Puleng is chasing her everywhere. And this is funny because Puleng isn't dead. <laughs> so we, the viewers, are not scared when we see Puleng. Hi. But because of this trauma, she decides to take a break from social media. Oh, if you did not know, Fikile is a social media influencer. So she deleted some of the popping apps from this app that looks like Instagram to this plus size Twitter lookalike. It really shows that the series is trying to be inclusive to plus size people. If there's a slip Twitter, why can't there be a big ass tweet? She goes to school and almost gets trampled by Sam, AKA Minion Guy. Then Sam was like, hey, hey, baby, I wanted to kill you. That's the only way I could get your attention. And it worked. I think I've been going about this relationship thing wrongly. You first hit her with your car, come down from the car, and tell her as you see her gasping for breath. <gasps> hey, don't close your eyes. <laughs> look here, look here. I was trying to get your attention. <laughs> Also, he's fine, that's why, so please don't go and hit anybody and not send you a message. In just one episode, he did not just try to kill her once, he also tried it twice. He almost drowned her, but before he could use that his attention line again, he got punched. I just joined the swimming team. Then I saw your girl over here and I thought I'd play a little joke. Hey! Papa God, help me. Pulling on the other hand can't sleep and this is because she finally told Fikile about her findings from the first season. And if you watch the first season, you know that she found nothing. Yeah, she found nothing. She also has a little resentment for her dad because Papa was selling kids. Pulling is still dating KB with a fake chain. Apparently, he traveled and when he came back, his song with Nasty C was a smash hit. So he got all the chicks falling for him. I heard your song on the radio this morning. I think my problem is too much talent. I have too much of intelligence. This good news did not last when Fikile family filed a restraining order against Puleng. And I'm not shocked. I feel it took them long enough. They should have done this from the very first episode. But Puleng, listen, speaking from experience, that doesn't matter. Just hide in the bushes and watch her. She's sleeping at the moment. Um, that's why I'm making this video and I'm reducing my voice. Guys, she just woke up. Oh my goodness, time to go home. Both families had this funny confrontation and I find it funny because they gave both girls space. Like, do you actually want them to fight? One weird thing I also noticed was that as soon as something bad happens, there is always this one wise guy that keeps going live. This guy probably has like five followers and is going live. Going live for who? Friend, 
You threatening to turn Figile's whole life upside down. Everything she's ever known. On top of that, you dating her ex. I saw. At the end of episode one, we found out that when Fikile was way younger, she drowned. And after being treated by the doctor, she jumped back into the water. And you know what they say, if it failed to kill you, you probably did not try hard enough. Kuleng then told KB with the fake chain that Fikile might be her sister. And we were happy. She finally shares a good secret with her boyfriend. Oh no. Look at this guy. <laughs> Who wears that at night? Timpaland. Really? Is there a club nearby? She tricked him big time because all she wanted to do was just check if her laptop is in his house. And she got caught by someone. But the biggest oh oh moment was the part where it was revealed that Sam's mom, who is like the therapist in the school, had the DNA kit and Pulen's laptop. Gasp! Episode 2 titled Me D was one of the funniest episodes to me. If you noticed, I did not talk about the most friended guy in the show. And that's because in episode 1, he struggled so much to finish his sentence. You we have a new chief editor. Who? <laughs> This was the episode Risi decided to sell drugs full time in her new show called Recos. <laughs> she also got caught smoking weed and was given detention. Do South Africans know that there's Africa in their name? Where are the belts? Where are the tools for mass destruction? Eh? Fikile and Sam get closer in school and I love this because I can relate to it. The only reason I went to school most times was to see my crush and when she left school, I stopped going to school. That's, that's right. I'm a dropout, guys. Because of her. It's not my fault. Why did she stop coming to school? But Fix needed him to take her somewhere. Only because he has this yeah, yeah power bike that almost kills people. And she is doing her own little investigation by the side. They met this lady that helped Puleng in the first season. And she asked them for data immediately. Then when Fix showed her KB's dad's picture, this happened. Do you recognize him? Hey! Papa God, help me. In the last episode, Pullen got caught by KB's dad. The guy wanted to choke her destiny. She escaped that situation using the oldest trick in the book, aggressive line. I thought you were going to the bathroom. I was. I... Uh, I need a toilet paper. Whoever gave you this idea, it's not a good idea. Han Fix finally did the DNA test. She's angry her mom is still with a child stealer, aka Julius. KB is sad that this happened. <laughs> Did I interrupt something? They got to this old family house owned by KB's dad for his birthday because Tuleng manipulated him into doing this party there. And this party was crazy. They had drugs. Everyone was happy. This guy was probably too happy. Zama was the one that found some solid information because Wade got some tragic news. Wait, is it, is it just me or... Just been acting a bit different ever since we had sex. Ah! So allegedly, KB's dad gave Puleng's dad 35k to sell his child, I think. <laughs> and the gasp of the episode was that Fikile was not her sister. Gasp! <gasps> The source. Risi starts her new narco side show where she employs people to sell drugs for her, and her aim is to be the biggest cartel in South Africa. <laughs> Pulenk is hot after seeing her dad's name on the checkbook and has this strong feeling that the test was fabricated, like all my exams I failed. If I failed it, it was fabricated by the school. That's a wonderful line, man. I'm going to start using it. But Fix isn't having it. I don't blame her. Think about it. Do you want to live with Puleng and her family? <laughs> I'd rather live with the Teletubbies with mushrooms than live there. Oh, side note, did you know I found the richest character in this show? And you guys would think he's one of these guys. But no, you are wrong. <laughs> it's this guy. I don't know if you guys saw it, but I saw him in episode 3. And I saw him in episode 2. How? Talk to me, bro. You the police? Is you the LBI? She goes to the police station looking for a retired detective called Joseph, but to no avail. And at this point, Puleng has been to her house twice in the last five days, and she has been to school once in the last 
eight months. They locate the detective thanks to Zama's cousin, and I was shocked <laughs> that he stays in the trenches, man. When they got there, we see the suspicious man following them, and they thought he wanted to steal because that's how stereotypes work. So they ran. Sadly, it turned out that this guy was a helper trying to return Wade's phone, but it was too late because Wade is a Jude. What is he doing? Taekwondo? Judo. They meet the Joseph guy and give him the rundown of everything that happened so far. And he said a lot here, but the cocoa of the matter was that her dad did not believe his wife was carrying his child and wanted her to do a paternity test. And in that little process of doing a paternity test, he sold the child for extra cash. I, I believe that's what happened. If you think I said the wrong thing, please tell me in the comment section. And the episode ended with KB's dad, aka Tupac. I can also get down. Some Speaking to the kids on career day. It will be offering a paid up internship to one lucky student of Pakist High. And you'll be judged by your grades. Damn, man! I failed at the very first requirement. Damn! Episode 4 was titled Spiyoyo, one of the best names ever. It was named after an egg. I love that egg. Risi, as we already know, is in this sub arc called Recos. The Telemundo drama. And as she was making money for her mom, that woman was like, hmm, what if I use this cash to buy some shoes? Not one, not two, <laughs> not 60. And I love that Risi wasted no time in sending her mom straight to the mental home. Um, you said I should call if she's having another episode. Tuleg's new task in this episode is to get the internship from KB's dad. But sadly, she could not get it because she's still in a lower class. So she used her skill in persuasion to make KB pull some strings. And it worked. Woman power, man. She starts her internship and I won't lie. In just day one, she was already going through confidential files. And if that's not all, she was able to steal some key cards and open some private doors. This chick is begging to be killed. You understand? And I'm not gonna save her. As this one was doing a speed run on how to die very fast, her boyfriend was going through a lot. His dad told him that he's not going to sponsor his music dream. And if that's not enough, he also threw away all his equipment for no reason. If you ask me, that was one of the dumbest things Tupac Shakol has ever done in his life. But the good news about this is that KB already has a cool ass backstory as a rapper. Like just looking at his to-do list will tell you that he got this, he's going to be a rapper soon. He wants to sell his car, that's awesome. He wants to sell his sneakers, that's awesome. He wants to go into business with a known drug dealer. Guys! We we found Jay-Z, man. But the sad part about this was that when the funding from his dad stopped, KB started looking like a riffraff. Literally, anytime you saw him in any scenes from now to the end of the season, he just looks like nobody invited him and he was just there. <laughs> I'm not even like, what then solidified his riffraffness was when he killed Spioyo. In the final moments of the episode, Fikile caught her grandmom and her mom for not just lying but also tampering with the DNA. Break time! Before the last three episodes, this is the time I have to advertise. If you're new here and you want to support me, kindly please like this video, turn on post notifications, subscribe. You're doing it backwards. No, no, it's subscribe. Why are you uh, uh, Turn on post notifications, like this video, and also you can support me on my Patreon. It is where people give me money to eat. I don't have a lot of people there but it would be nice if you gave me money to eat i am hungry i am a starving child <laughs> all right if you do that i'm going to be buying you a car in the possible future add over Episode 5 titled Pulling vs. The World. Risi in the previous episode got caught by this teacher named Mr. Ferreira. Nadal Ferreira. But he did not report her, rather, he wants to be added to the business because this is Ricos, the new Narcos spin off from Telenovela. Pulling got the slap that she clearly needs for being too rude. Her boyfriend is sick because of the beatdown he got in the last episode. <laughs> Baba get fever. Oh, no. He broke up with Pulen because he feels she's being dishonest and she's probably doing things with Wade. And I wouldn't lie, I want to support him because I'm not a huge fan of Pulen. But he killed Spioyo, guys. He killed Spioyo. 
drugs. Yo, yo. She got caught doing drugs because the counselor set her up, obviously. Rookie move. Don't ever leave your bag unattended. I always take my handbag everywhere I go, man. The drug test came positive. As I said, rookie move, guys. But what this means is that because she's taking drugs, apparently, the school would likely expel her. Not because it's bad, but because her parents are broke and it doesn't favor the school. So this happened. Ma, see ya. We're busy talking. Sis Bulen just tried to steal my life savings. Damn it. Then at night, they met the man that redid the test, but they only had 95% of the money. And the man was like, nah. <laughs> You have to sucky sucky my body. And she poured in pepper spray. They checked the test and guess what? <laughs> they are both sisters. Wow. We already knew this. The episode ended with the best diss track ever from Riff Raff. Episode 6 titled Dark Times. A lot happened but I have to quickly go through them because you guys are probably getting bored. Risi got scammed by Nadal Ferreira. He apparently resigned and took all her money away. And that's how her story arc ended I guess. Rikos, the Narcos spin-off ended at that point from telenovela. Puleng at this point is working with the police and they are dissecting all her evidence, making her feel stupid, which she is. Fix still has nightmares, but we all know this is happening because she's sad that she's going to lose all her privileges and leave it Puleng. She also wants her psycho mom to confess to her father because that's the only one that matters in this case, not the family she stole her from. Not the police but her father <laughs> a man that no one cares about she said okay then deleted all the files a smart move man so when the police eventually found out it looks like she wanted to kill herself but <laughs> she can't do it guys she can't you <laughs> At the end, Riff Raff came to apologize and also told her that the picture she got from his dad's office is his mom. And the episode ended there. Episode 7 was titled Family Matters. This was the finale where everything we have watched so far finally gets explained. Fix mother is under a lot of duress. At one point, she threatened to talk. That did not end well because she's never going to leave jail. Orange Groove or Grove, <laughs> I don't know what they call it. The clinic that Risi took her mom to. They are now shouting. Hey. Take your mom seat money and take your mom away from here we don't need her sam's house was broken into by the worst burglar i've ever seen in my life she's pregnant just use a knife and <laughs> the sad news about this was that the burglar took the laptop and the dna kits and he got away Plank was now interested in wait for no damn reason <laughs> poor guy surprise me uh, it's just sad because Wade was already starting something but because he always had a soft spot for Puleng, he would definitely come back. That is why nobody should insult the dons. He took her to the aquarium to look at fish. That's what you do when the girl you like is boring. They finally kissed. No one cares. Now they're just looking like those relationships you saw in school that the guy and the girl were matching football jerseys and you'll be at the back and you'll be shouting. Mm, disgusting but you you wanted to wear jerseys too then after the kiss she went home to bad news because that's all that follows this girl literally but this time it was not just for her it was for her dad in the case for the paternity of Fiki Lebele we have determined that she is in fact the daughter of Tande Kakuma upon further analysis we have determined that Fiki Lebele is in fact not the daughter of Julius Kumalo. <laughs> My guy is pissed. <laughs> and I, t I saw something. Fikile and Puleng, they are twins. <laughs> He's the only... The boy is his only child. <laughs> I'm sorry, Julius. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the worst news was Fick's mom was kidnapped by Riff Raff's mom. And that's how it ended. What do I have to say about the show? It's good. It was new. I truly liked the characters. I really love the class that they are putting Africa in. They put it in this pedestal. Where some white people would watch this show and be like, Oh, wait a minute. They have clothes in Africa. When did that happen? I feel Puleng is the villain of the show. And someone should just end this girl's life. I don't even care anymore. She cheated on Wade in record time. I 
have never seen a more hated character like this ever. I don't think anybody supports her. I'm so glad they showed more of Reese's story. But yeah, I really liked it, guys. The only thing I feel I hated was they killed a character that was going to make the show better. And I think after the character left, a little piece of me left also. So I would beg you guys in season three, please bring back Spiyoyo. I need him. I say sorry all the time. I've said things that ain't right. Thank you guys for watching. Shout out to Iroko Critic. He helped me get the video. Oh my gosh, I just saw the recording. It's like 40 something minutes. Oh, this is going to be a long video. I truly enjoyed watching it. Guys, when I'm recording this, I'm not sure any character dropped their videos. I sent few messages out. I got a respond from one. And I'm hoping you guys saw a video at the beginning. If you did not, it's totally fine. I truly appreciate them. They are doing the long so guys um, thank you guys for watching subscribing and continuously supporting me please subscribe to this channel and also subscribe to my patreon it helps me out a lot um, when i can be able to eat food because sometimes i don't eat because i only have like two patrons guys and you would also get special treatments as seeing your name up there and also getting to watch the video like a whooping maybe 24 or five days or a week before every other person watches it so yeah thank you guys for continuously supporting me i've been talking for too long okay bye bye guys it's perfect.